Hello again, The Practitioner here. So, uh, I last left off on um, uh, trying to figure out a way to help uh, blacks, whites, and other groups uh, work in. Well, one possible method which would actually, um, you know, teach people, rather than saying like, you know, oh, this is legitimate history or what have you, um, I've noticed that a lot of the social studies classes will do a little bit in current world events, but they do very little of history, period, unless it's history about the nation that we're already in, Canada. Well, you know, for a, um, I hate to say it, but the thing is that, you know, I am a little bit concerned about the current social studies program anyway, um, largely because of the fact that, well, in my case, I got a lucky break. I took a sailing trip around the world, and I learned about cultures from various different parts of the world. But what it did, uh, and this is, the, this is the interesting bit, is that what it did was it taught me two things. Not that one culture is better than another or anything like that, but it taught me a way to be able to see how the progression of history, as the uh, head of the resource board pointed out, that there was all this, um, you know, that there, uh, it was one of his good points, that there was all this uh, history that had gone through the uh, Ayurvedic and uh, Chinese traditions. Well, what's interesting is that um, if you take a look at university first-year philosophy classes, um, when they go through uh, the teaching of how reason and intellect and all that, and teaching philosophy and logic, they actually do teach about how the traditions went through the Chinese systems and eventually did come to the West. And um, if we're going to teach about the backgrounds as well, we should also mention uh, some of the other stuff. About like for, um, and in some high schools, they actually do this. In some middle schools, they do uh, teach a little bit of this. About, say, for example, how the Hindus came up with the, uh, the Arabic number, numeral system. Then the Arab traders, who were t uh, trading with uh, various Hindu uh, kingdoms, um, Indian kingdoms, uh, took the concept of Arabic numerals, uh, took the concept of the, uh, of the, of the nine uh, numerals with the zero, um, took those uh, numerals, and brought them to the West, thus uh, superseding the Roman num numeral system. You know, like this is a um, this is a very basic um, example of how other racial groups did provide very useful um, effects. Uh, if you want to take a look at other um, examples of history, um, and if you're wanting to teach about more recent stuff, um, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, no, again, we're not. I'm not comparing it versus modern medicine. I'm talking about how. Um, uh, if you want to talk about history, um, or like in science class or what have you, um, here's another thing which is interesting. When people talk about the development of modern chemistry uh, or modern um, biology or what have you, they teach a lot about how um, about how uh, modern alchemy. And this is one of the things they do forget. And the, and uh, you know, and I'm not saying that Chinese is any better than this, but I do think that we are leaving out parts of the of the education system. In basic science classes, they'll teach about uh, a little bit about the history of the science, you know, from, from alchemy in the old medieval times up to modern day where we now know all the elements and the basic chemical laws. Well, here's another thing which you could take a look at. Um, why not, when you're going over that, look at the two, form, the two major groups who are trying to pursue alchemy, one of which was the, um, one of which was the, uh, the modern uh, day who were trying to transmute lead into gold and how we learned that that wasn't possible. But secondly, about the Chinese alchemy, who were, uh, the Chinese alchemists who were trying to uh, discover um, the basis for, um, you know, who were trying to discover the basis for eternal life. And in the process, they did discover a large amount of chemicals, herbs, and other stuff like that, and even various uh, points in the body. Well, actually, that would be more for biology when talking about the nervous system. Um, you know, that, uh, you know you, um, when talking about the nervous system and our discovery of that, you could mention about acupuncture and the, um, a few of the discoveries that were made about the nervous system along the way or um, about what various chemicals such as mercury did to the body. I mean, um, talk about the faults of Chinese alchemy and, the, and modern alchemy as well, uh, you know, and, and Western alchemy. Like, for example, um, the Emperor Qin, the very first uh, unified emperor of China, uh, you know, who united all of China, um, he was trying to become immortal, and his, uh, and his alchemist suggested taking mercury every day. Well, because he took such high quantities, he died of insanity and poisoning. You know, so that would be a good example of, uh, of, of a fault of alchemy right there, saying, by the way, you know, uh, mercury made you insane, and some of the older Chinese alchemists didn't know any better. You know, like, let's, you know, like, um, you know, like, let's cover all the faults and developments in this, alchem in this alchemic um, process from two independent groups. Let's talk about the discovery of gunpowder, you know, uh, like uh, the various chemical, like, if we're going to talk about gunpowder and its examples and how that works, um, you know, it's mentioned basic that it came from China. Let's talk about a little bit of the context of that, you know. Um, this is not putting one group over another. This is, uh, you know, compare. Um, back when I was in grade 12, they had an optional class called Comparative Civilizations, which um, covered a large chunk of Eastern, Western, African civilizations. And you know, um, now granted, it was very introductory and overgoing. Um, and it would be an idea now not to, um, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, like to try to uh, say like one religion's better than the other or try to, you know, force people's religions down their throats. But it would be an idea to, um, and here's my second point, um, and 
but this is the, and this is for another issue altogether. Um, you know, the things that compared to civilization, you could provide a, a little bit better of a background of uh, by doing a course like that, or you know, or by bringing in you know stuff from the entire world, uh, you know, in the history, of development of science, philosophy, and other things like that that you know have helped us come to where we are now. Um, by doing that, you can then pick the um, you know, as he said, pick you know, good art versus bad art or what have you. Well, there are some stuff which are uniquely innovative to various cultures. Um, you know, certain art forms. You don't need to be able to just pick good art versus bad art. You need to be able to go through those various arts and say, okay, well, here's something new about this culture that may not necessarily be adapted in Western culture or that uh, could be fitted in with parts of Western culture that could even improve it, you know. Um, he's right. We do need to be able to look at various cultures and be able to decide that. The problem, however, is the fact that in the current system, um, you know, they are right. We do have a problem of, uh, of leaving out aspects of various other cultures. Or what we should do is we should provide a better library or make a note of reference saying, by the way, um, you know, we can't get everything in all these cultures today in class, but if you would like to do further reading on it, here's where you can go. Like, get them interested in it and then send them to the library and get them to do her books on it. Or better yet, to make it even more innovative, say cover a certain point in a comparative civilizations or social, social studies class on a particular culture. The class can't cover it in particularly great detail, so you get the students to do it as a paper or something like that. Like, you know, do it, um, do it to teach a point in the curriculum, a minor point, and say, give me a three-page paper on it, and get them to go to the library and do some comprehensive learning on it. Here's an example. Uh, back Now, this, of course, mind you, was back in the 70s when my father was still a kid, um, but you don't see too much of this now, and it would be very much appreciated. Um, uh, I think at least it is still reflective in some schools. Um, my dad, um, now again, like I said, I'm not trying to work on tradition. I'm not sure if this is still accurate for this day. But um, well, this might be an effective system. Uh, my dad was trying to start a philosophy, uh, a, uh, an astronomy club at his high school. And he was having uh, not much success because uh, the problem was that teachers had to actually, uh, in order to be able to get a school club, you had to have a supervision by a teacher. None of the science teachers were interested in this because they were afraid, like, oh, crap, just one more thing i got to do on my marking schedule. However, a history teacher who had no knowledge in astronomy whatsoever was actually interested in supervising the club on the following conditions. When he got, when, uh, when the philosophy, te when the history teacher went to supervise every club meeting, he wanted to learn something new about astronomy. You know, he wanted to learn something new about astronomy and mathematics by the time he got back. So he was vaguely interested in this field, and he wanted to learn more. So every kid had to uh, had to um, research one particular aspect in astronomy or mathematics or something like that. You know, one aspect of the physical universe or cosmology. And then every session when the club met, they had to do a presentation to the rest of the club uh, and the teacher on on this particular aspect of astronomy. So this way, the teacher could go away feeling uh, that they had learned something in the process. So it was like a class for the teacher, so to speak. And it was a you know it was sort of, it was like an extra class, but supervised by another independent teacher. So the teacher Teacher could learn something, and even at my school, we um, even at my uh, now I went to a private school, so I'll admit you know things were a little bit better. But I'd love to see this implemented for the public system, um, that uh, kids are able. Uh, you know, we had um, we had this thing even in the science classes called student directed learning, and what it was, it was not a la Montessori where you kind of learn the material at your own rate. What they did was that the teachers would actually present a topic, saying like, listen. Here's the topic of uh, here's the topic that we have to learn in the curriculum. Like every so often they would do this, and they'd say, "Okay, I want you to go research. I want you to go research, perform experiments. You know, do a whole bunch of background research for this class. You are going to come in here and you are going to do a lecture, slides and everything on this particular point. And they they did this for my science class. Most of the kids came out with actually 80s and 90s, and the teachers were marking the uh, what they had learned compar compared to the curriculum. These kids were the bulk of them, like something well over um, well over 70 percent of the class came out with 90 percent overall in the course because of these repeated uh, marks. They actually did a comparison with the local other schools in the uh, with the local other schools in the area, where there were about like three or four other high schools in the area, one of which was a private school. We did better in the overall uh, science grading for uh, the grade 10 year than the uh, local other private school did, and the two high schools. You know, each of whom were using a different system, one of which was using a self-directed Montessori-based system, another one of which was using the traditional high school system, and the private school of which was using the same traditional high school-based, you know, uh, rote learning system. Um, by doing this, you know, the kids kind of, uh, you know, it was more of a research-based type issue, which is kind of reflective of what you would expect to do in the real world. So by teaching kids, um, and okay, anyway, more in the next video. Um, but this is sort of my idea of you know of, of of explore this sort of idea to kids and then innovate them you know get them rather than uh, you know even with doing the segregation or or, or not 
um, you know, by fostering kids and saying like this is where you come from or this is uh, your capability. Now at the same time, research this other stuff. Well, more in the next video.